go for it anna you can make a start all yours okay okay so this is a case of a preterm baby of 31 weeks it was an a no stop stopable vaginal delivery only one um, uh, corticoid one uh, time and uh, he was born and needed re reanimation at birth with a card score of 589. He was transferred to the NICU, intubated and ventilated, and did the first dose of surfactant on the first hours of life. And then he was extubated to um, B level. And uh, in the second day, he did the second dose of surfactant. Uh, I was not there, so I don't have the ultrasounds of the first days. But on the fourth day of life, during the, the night, the beginning of the fourth day, he will get worse and needed to get back to be level again. The FiO2 was okay, but the blood gases were not so okay, but get better with the B level started. And um, so when I was there on day life of life four, I did the, the lung ultrasound. So to remember, he did two uh, surfactant doses in, in this, before this. So we can see on the right upper that there are there is a pleural line that is maybe a bit irregular, but not much, with the A lines visible all along and some B lines that are not are, are not so confluent. Yep. And R2 is similar, a bit worse in the lower part near the liver more confluent B lines, but some A lines visible too in in the in some spaces. Yep. And the same in R3. Sometimes it seems that there are some supleural consolidations like here and here. Yep. In R2 also, I think. I would so, agree. Um, I, I call this a snowflake sign. Yep. This area here and on R3 also. Yep. And um, the left side was almost the same. So confluent B lines in some parts, better lung in others with more A lines. The pleural line a bit irregular, some subpleural consolidations, consolidations yep. here in L2 and L3, almost the same, a bit bigger consolidation here. Yep. But some snowflake sign and the small supleural consolidations. So I thought this was a ultrasound from a baby who had an RDS and was improving after surfactant with some um, parts of the lung better than others. So compatible with this, um, this di diagnosis. I would agree. Uh, again, just image quality is very good. Uh, I can see the depth up to four centimeters in a very uniform way. Uh, what frequency are you using? For uh, 12. 12, which is working perfectly. Oh. Uh, you know, you're getting the entire anatomy. The plura is defined very, very well. Uh, you, especially L3, you can see snowflake sign with, you know, subplural consolidations very beautifully in that margin there that you've got your finger at. So that's, that's amazing. I, I, <laughs> I don't have anything to say, Anna. It's very good. Thank you, Omar. Well done. Um, so, I, oh, the, I had the x-rays yeah. from, from the first day and the day before yeah. the lung ultrasound is compatible with the lung ultrasound, yeah. I think. This... Agree. And actually, the right side is a little bit better oh. than the left on the, the ultrasound. You have a little bit more yes, subdural consolidations. We, yeah. we saw the same in the x-ray, yes. And then I, on... If I can go on, yeah, yeah. please, please. On day, two, on day eleven, um, he needed to be ventilated invasively um, because of um, CO two was too high. Yep. The FiO two was okay, but he had thick and um, lots of secretions, and um, he was intubated three days before this ultrasound. That on day eight he was intubated, and on day eleven I did the lung ultrasound. But really, is better. Well aerated. The yep. sound is better, well aerated, occasional B lines, A profile mainly, no supleural consolidations. So yep. the baby was getting better. 
maybe the secretions were the, the cause because the lung was okay. And I did, it was supine, but I did the posterior axillary line here, a bit worse, but nothing to worry, I guess, with A lines and uh, sliding and yep. occasional B lines a bit more confluent on the back, but it was supine. So I think Excellent. this was not the cause to, to be worse. Yep, well rated the again. Left yep. side, uh, also well rated, occasional B lines, A profile, and the, uh, the pleural line better um, defined than the previous ultrasound on the day on day four, and the same on the L3 and L5, the same in the posterior axillary line here. Yep, A, A lines, good A lines. Some B lines and more confluent B lines because it was supine. Amazing. So, uh, the the lung was improving, was almost normal lung. Yeah. And um, the baby gets extubated the next day to be pap to see pap, and the, the the blood gases were okay. And later we know knew that the, there was a staphylococcus in the secretions. But he never had the CRP, I CRP, nor the X ray or ultrasound with consolidation. So maybe it was just a colonization. I don't know if he was treated because I'm not in the hospital. I'm in another hospital today. But the baby was okay when I left the hospital. Um, and this was the X ray. On the day he had to get intubated again, and on the day of the ultrasound. Yep. It's good. Yep. It's a good X-ray. Well aerated X-ray. Uh, well yeah. done. Again, very good clinical correlation. And, uh, you know, I, I think the diagnosis matches the, the clinical progress of the baby. Your image quality is amazing. Uh, so I make that six OSAL forms for you. Actually, seven. Because we've had uh, two. I, I'll classify this as two cases separately today. So what we'll be doing is just for everybody, your OSAL forms will probably get scanned in on Friday once my secretary is back. So we've done them, but the image quality is amazing. Interpretation is absolutely fine. Uh, I have I have no additions to make. God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm afraid, I'm afraid if we change the ultrasound machine that I can't then have this quality on long ultrasound. And I wouldn't worry too much. I mean, what I'd say is that the art of doing the ultrasound is actually you can use any probe. The question is, are you taking the fallacies of that probe into account when you're doing the image interpretation? And a, a very good example is when you use the, the curvilinear probe in particular, uh, B lines which look quite thin over here and you know quite linear all the way down will tend to appear more like glass, uh, glass, glassy appearance with a much mm -hmm. wider width. And they can sometimes make you feel you have an exaggerated B profile. So it's just that clinical correlation. You know, if your baby is reasonable and well, then I wouldn't read too much into why the curvilinear probe is showing a slightly more of a kind of a B line uh, depth uh, and thickness. So, but yeah, I, I think very good images. Well done. Thank you a lot. Stop sharing. Dr. Leila, would you like to go next? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. So, share. Sorry. Don't, Take don't your time. Why. Take your time. No problems. We're not in oh. a hurry. We're a nice okay. small group yeah. today. Yeah. Share now. Can I see my slide now? We can see your slides. Lovely. I'm just going to go and just make sure I have. Uh... Okay. So a little bit challenging case. Uh, I look. Um, yeah. So this is a term uh, 37 plus two weeks, singleton. Uh, the baby uh, um, was born by uh, spontaneous vaginal delivery, GPS negative. Received, the mom received morphine around 5 a.m., uh, which is around uh, three hours before the delivery. Yep. Uh, baby cried initially, apnea at five minutes, needed PPV for two to three minutes, spontaneous breathing, uh, but remained uh, needing uh, oxygen. That's why we admitted to the NICU. 
Um, so in the NICU, did very well, uh, normal breathing, uh, normal um, uh, went uh, tolerated uh, nasal cannula oxygen, uh, was a room in one hour, and they stopped the respiratory support. Uh, around two to three hours of flight, 2.5 you know, hours to three hours of flight, they started get, getting more oxygen requirement, 35%. Uh, they had to go to high flow and then they went to uh, uh, to receive up. Uh, when I came to examine the baby, had a bulging chest, so I just had to do uh, the ultrasound before they do the the um, ultrasound. Sorry, the X-ray. Sorry, before seeing the X-ray. Yep. So this is uh, what we what I have decided to do for the you know parameters. Just 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 asking you, if that's uh, something you do always uh, when you do the ultrasound. So for reject. Edge, dynamic, sharp, uh, compound. Is that yeah, something? Yeah, just the speckle reduction. Usually, I keep it two or three. Okay. So three and four basically might dampen down your images a lot. Your dynamic range is absolutely fine for the GE and uh, reject. I usually keep at one to two, so that's good. And your edge enhancement is three, is it? It's around two. Fine, that's absolutely fine. fine. Just you, okay. your speckle reduction, uh, sure. you can you can drop it a little bit. It just gives you, uh, it might make your images less bright than you want. But this oh. is perfect, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is the first um, R1. Um, it looks fine. Uh, I, I could see, uh, uh, you know, sliding. Yeah. Uh, the the pluralines seem to be fine for me. Um, yeah. Uh, continuous. I could see uh, A-line mainly. Uh, yep. And then maybe this is a double a double uh, lung point in this side here. Yep. The same thing here, nice sliding, uh, beautiful A lines, uh, uh, beautiful pleural, um, uh, you know, uh, thinning. Uh, yep. So no worries here. Lovely. I just made because of the bulging the chest. I was just worried about pneumothorax, of course. So I just try try to do the uh, the mo mode. And he seemed to be a, a seashore um, in mode. Yep, I agree. Okay, now we're coming to R3. So here you could see the Z, Z um, line, which we yep. talked about last time, right? Yep, yep, that's true. Yep. And, um, and, and I wasn't sure if this is something I have to worry about or not. Like, is, is, is it sliding or not? But I decided it's sliding. Yeah, I would agree, Dr. Lela, sliding because I can see what my gut feeling is a, a comet tails. And uh, yeah. the challenge when we get into the axilla is the keeping it 90. But mm -hmm. my impression is you've just got some comet tails there and I can see them move. So I can see clear sliding. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So now we are in R3, just moving, uh, sweeping the, the... And here, I, I could see... Oh, don't know um. I could see clear, clear air lines. Uh, I think the sliding is normal. It's just this area here I was worried about over here. Yeah, you're right. So when I look at the left of your screen, so the right, so I'm looking at the right of your screen. I'm in yes. no doubt that there's sliding there. Mm -hmm. You've got a very classical bamboo line appearance. Just when you yes. go to the left of R3 yes. at the top, my, my question is, there is, again, the sliding there that's visible, but just the extreme left, uh, with the F8, I just, I just wonder whether they might not be sliding there, but let's interrogate that a little bit more. And you've done the right thing by putting an, uh, a kind of an uh, M mode on. Exactly. So yeah. that's what I hear. I try to put the M mode where I see the sliding, and then I move it, and this is what I got. I mean, I try to modify the machine to see get better picture, but for me, it could be, it could be. Uh, so it could be a lung point on, you might yeah. have a very small air leak on the left side. Just, exactly. I mean, it's very, very, uh, you know, for me, the right side to the right of your cursor, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about sliding, but I do wonder whether the left side there is sliding it's or not. Small area. Yeah. And so I, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, please. No, no, not at all. Now, you do have an intermittent sandy beach mm. and a seashore kind of a sign. So I think what you've captured there is the area that's sliding. And what I would have done is taken my cursor to the extreme left mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to kind of see if the barcode sign plays out. 
Okay. And okay. again, the best thing in that situation is within the same clip, what, what you normally do is you can increase the time for which the clip is taken. So mm -hmm. when you that basically means you capture a lot more, but there okay. is definitely a possible, maybe small air bubble on the left of the screen. Here, I'd say you've got a seashore sign at the moment mm -hmm. with okay. a little bit of lung pulse as well. You've got T lines as well, so you can mm -hmm. see. So again, if you had a pneumothorax, you'd almost certainly, from my perspective, have had no T lines. Good. Okay. So next slide. Now here I'm just moving more, more to the to the R4, and again the same 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 conclusion. Like you know, do I see here small small uh, pneumothorax just with the, with the A line? Yeah. So again we put the M mode, and as you said, as, as you said, like here is a seashore, but yep. here maybe the barcode. Okay, let's let's interrogate that. Yep. Can you play the image, Doctor Leila? Yes, just like God bless you. Yeah. I mean, you see the comet tails. I mean, you could see lighting, but I don't know why I got this this um, uh, you know emote shape. Uh, it's a little bit unusual because I'm hundred percent sure there's sliding in the image in R four as well, there, yeah. and okay. uh, you've got a seashore. I mean, the only other thing that I can think of is a slight loss of contact. Okay. Or, or just you. Mm -hmm. Loss of contact would be the most common thing. The only thing about loss of contact is your R4 image is beautiful. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. yeah, overall, my gut feeling is this looks okay. I can see sliding throughout, even with the bamboo sign. I can definitely see a comet tail moving right in the center of the image. Mm -hmm. And you have a seashore sign in R4. And whether transiently, you might have just lost a little bit of contact when you got that. Mm -hmm. And a classical okay. example is a baby who's very vigorous, who's crying where you're mm -hmm. unable to hold the probe with continuity. But it doesn't look like there's a lung point there at this particular point, based on what I can see in the image. Okay. Yeah. Good. But can I just say your image is a very good quality, Dr. Lela. Very you. nice. Very Thank nice. You. So now R5 and R6, they seem yep. to be fine. L less related than the previous uh, you know, uh, views. Yep. But uh, sliding... Uh, I don't know, just maybe because I zoomed, it looks thickened, you know, plural, but, uh, but for me, it looks fine for me. I, I would say normal views. Okay, with, with the mostly, mostly, you could see A-line and, and B-line, but mostly A-line, I would say. Uh, now, we come into the left side. Again, the same thing, sliding, plural, nice plural. Uh, AB bone mostly seem to be the, the the right side of the lung is more related than the the the, the left side. Yep. But I could see sliding all over. Yep, and uh, yep. Did you want to comment on that? Yeah, just ooh, I think what we might want to do in this particular mm -hmm. image again is we we're just a little bit fuzzy towards the bottom. And yes. again, it just suggests to me that contact might be a slight issue. Yes. So was, was the baby quite vigorous and active? No, no, no. Actually, I tried. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, to use different frequencies to see if it give me a better image. Sure, sure. Um, so this is what I captured. But I went yeah. to like, you know, 9 to, to 12 of a frequency. Sure. Um, but that's the maximum I could get. No problems. No problems. Definitely sliding. And I can't see bee lines. Uh, you know, my, my gut feeling is you see comet tails and this is where aerated lungs. Your A lines are a little bit less well defined. Yes. And yeah, I mean, when I'm back uh, on intensive care, maybe we can have a little bit of a play. Okay, excellent. Thank God you. bless you. L5, same thing. Maybe, as you said, like, you know, maybe the contact or maybe... But I could see yeah. to the end, but I cannot just see the the the, the you know the yeah. clear A line. Yeah. And this is the X-ray. Yeah. I look. I don't know if you can call this pneumostenium small. Yep. Actually, it, what we saw, we saw here, not here. The... Yeah. No, no doubt. And there is a small pneumomeristinum. And uh, mm -hmm. but my gut feeling is your right lung looks very nice. It yes. looks okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not as if the heart border is sharp. 
you know, I can see lung markings all the way through. Uh, you've got a little bit of fluid in the fissure. So mm -hmm. I think your your clinical pictures are one of a kind of a baby who's transitioning. Yeah, okay. with with a little bit of TTM. Yeah, I mean, with with the, with the uh, you know long PPP period, you would was worried like you know it might yeah, have yeah. a leak, but no. it doesn't seem to be. It was fine. Thank you. Thank no you problems. Much. So we have a question, uh, Naz. Uh, you wanted to ask a question. Sorry, I just wanted to ask when um, Leila showed the M mode um, and the uh, barcode sign, where yep. was the probe marker at that point? Because I couldn't see it. And it could be, is it is it between the ribs and that's what's causing it to show kind of... This picture the, it has? It, it looks it's like it's at the level of the pleura nas. Can you see? Mm. Okay. You can see those dots. I don't think it's actually the rib. Uh, no, it's here actually. Okay. Yep, it's here. Yeah. yeah. It's... So, it's Yep. Yeah. Go for it. Leila. I was trying to find that, that area which which I thought there was no no uh, sliding. Uh, looking at at R four and R three, but uh, so 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 you know I thought it was actually a barcode, but uh, as Alok said, maybe maybe it's just a contact. But it's a fair point that uh, Nas is raising is that mm. you know if you, I mean theoretically what you would get if you have a complete blank acoustic shadow is this image. So mm -hmm. few reasons why you can sometimes get this are lock, loss of contact, inadequacy of gel, or mm -hmm. typically what, what I'd say is in a very vigorous baby, when they breathe and they fight, you know, in you might lose contact during that period. And that can sometimes give you this appearance. But you've clearly demonstrated a seashore sign as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm very confident I can see poodle sliding there. So my gut feeling is it's just a little bit or maybe loss of contact or a lack of gel, because you can see a comet tail there beautifully. Yep. A small so I, I just, air. I, I, so I just small, say no, no, sorry. No, 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 that's absolutely fine. Yep. Uh, small air bubbles can be there, but again, mm -hmm. I just feel that I can see sliding in all those regions. So I'd be surprised if that's a, a, a lung point because of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you My pleasure. Much. Thank you so much. Uh, Stop sharing now. Uh, who else would like to share? Hi. Doris, Hi. go for it. Uh, sorry, it's going to take me a minute to find my slides. Let me see if I can find it. Just give me a minute to find them. Okay. Is there any particular area that anybody's struggling with at the moment in terms of scanning or any particular topics that they're particularly struggling with? Just while Doris is uh, looking for her slides, maybe what we can do is we can go through the presentation on lung recruitment and then Doris could present the case at the end. Doris, is that okay? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. So, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about a concept which we call S pattern. Can you see my slides and I'm, am I audible? Yes. Okay. So what... We've, we've previously covered, we're just going to go through a little bit of revision, is the fact that often with babies who say, for example, are on CPAP or who might be intubated and ventilated, we can have periods where they, they have respiratory deterioration, which clinically may present 
uh, as hypoxia or rising FiO2 to chase the oxygen levels or hypercapnia. Now, if you're intubated, ventilated, clearly one of the mnemonics that we use classically is the dope mnemonic. But more importantly, from our perspective, if you're happy that this is not a displaced tube, there's no evidence of an pneumothoracic equipment failure, then we really think about then kind of investigating why a baby with a certain kind of pathology is kind of desaturating or having uh, a high CO2 in terms of hypercapnia. Now, clearly, there are clinical reasons for this. But one of the things that we want to think of is when we're doing a lung ultrasound is really, well, why are we doing it? Why is the study being performed? And what management approach are we going to take after the study has actually been performed to try and improve the baby's clinical condition? And classically, what we normally do if we feel that we've covered dope and we don't feel there are other reasons for the deterioration is either do a chest X-ray or do a lung ultrasound. And some of the diagnosis that you're trying to look at are pneumothorax, pneumonia, BPD, lung edema, maybe if you have a PD and a VST. But one of the things that I think is very, very important from our perspective, I think whenever you have any kind of acute deterioration in an intubated baby is making sure that you know that the tube is in good position and that you have no evidence of what is reversible atelectasis with the tube. And I like to try and do that before I start my lung ultrasound. So just taking you through a, a case, uh, so this is a preterm 25 weeker, 770 grams. This baby was ventilated for two weeks and delivered in a setting of PPROM since 15 weeks of gestation. Now had conventional ventilation with a dose of surfactant, probably could have had the second dose, but uh, if babies are in air in my unit, uh, some people tend not to give the second dose. But uh, at about two weeks of age, I mean, this baby had kind of evolving lung disease and was on six mils per kilo. And uh, we had a sudden rise in the pressure needs of this baby with low saturations and a rising CO2. So pH of 7.2 with a CO2 in the range of about nine kilopascals, 64 millimeters. So an acute deterioration for which we're kind of thinking of the potential of uh, why. So what we did from our perspective at that particular stage was followed dope, uh, made sure that the tube wasn't obstructed and the tube was in good position, uh, fixed uh, you know, at a appropriate position at the lips. Uh, the air entry was equal. We did pre and post ductal saturations just to make sure that this is not evolving pulmonary hypertension. Uh, there were no heart murmurs, uh, equal air entry on the ventilator, translumination was negative. Uh, Naturally, from our perspective, we were kind of in a situation where the, the pressures had gone up to about 30. So clearly, this baby is needing high pressure now to kind of keep uh, the lungs uh, expanded on volume guarantee ventilation. We're already on six per kilo. So this is the right side. So let's get somebody to comment on this. Manju, are you, are you, are you able to hear me? Uh, yes, Alok. Okay. Uh, so, Manju, you have a partner in crime, and that's Anna. So, both of you. So, okay. what, what we're doing is a structured lung ultrasound. Mm. We're looking at the right side in this baby first. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to mental model. So, what do you think about the right side of the lung ultrasound on this baby? I mean, we can... Uh... Bit hard to recognize the plural sliding, but we can see some of the comet signs and the B uh, line going through. Very good. So, um, and uh, is there some subpulmonic consolidation? Some of them looks like uh, a bit bigger than usual. Uh, yep. With echo density and echo in between. Yep. Uh, so you're you yep you're right so just protocol would say can you see a batwing sign yes we can see the batwing sign yeah okay plura you're happy is does it look smooth linear or is it a little bit no, fuzzy plura is, uh, sorry alok i should have said that plura is uh, does not look smooth it looks broken in between sure and then uh, you're right that uh, what do you think there are sub plural consolidations uh, yes would go more with sub plural consolidation small 
Okay. And just if you were thinking of a profile. Yes. What what would you call this? A profile, B profile, A B oh, profile. B, B profile. B profile. Yes, B profile with uh, his subpulmonic changes, sure. changes. Lovely. Okay, Anna, what do you think? Do you concur? Yes. Look, I, I concur. Okay. Do. Yeah. So, um, maybe an element of small amounts of static air bronchograms there as well, just mm -hmm. below the subcrural consolidations, but mm -hmm. that's great. So, that's the right. Now we're just looking at the lower part of the right. And uh, what do you think? Any difference from R1? Manju? Uh, you know, again, the pleura is thickened, broken in between. And uh, with the subpulmonic changes, not so much evident as we saw in the uh, upper area. Okay, excellent. And, uh, and yeah, carry still on. The profile is B profile with... Uh, uh, some subpulmonic changes. Okay. Uh, and maybe the B line appears a bit more denser uh, in the uh, R2. Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is R3. What do we think about R3? R3, I think uh, similar picture uh, yep. as in the R1 and R2. Okay. I look at there is a larger sub uh, uh, pleuric um, consolidation in, in R3. Mm. Yeah, you would, I would, with the eye of faith, if you compare them, then, you know, R1, R2, and then if you look at R3, this the sub pleural consolidations look a little bit more dense, uh, especially on the left of the screen. So you're right. Mm. Uh, okay, so this is R5. So what do we think? I mean, in this, uh, it's a bit hard to uh, the clearly see the plural. You know, the plural, as we had seen in the previous ones. So the plural is broken in between more, I feel, with more of subpulmonic, uh, uh, subplural consolidations. Uh, the hard to now recognize any plural sliding, but it's uh, more dense B lines with a lot of sub uh, plural changes. Okay, so do you think there might be a pneumothorax here because there's no plural sliding? You know, because we are still seeing a lot of uh, echogenicity underneath it, with uh, which appears like a band B, you know, the... Uh, yeah. So maybe not, but uh, good to confirm with uh, the M mode. Okay, excellent. Anna, what do you think? I think that we have, um, um, no, we, I can see the plural line and I, I think I can see lots of static air bronchograms. Mm. So maybe this is a collect disease. Um, yep. So. You can see the border are not so so regular, so very I'm good. Confused. So what you're seeing, you can see a batwing sign over here, mm. and you can see thickened pleura. So I'm just gonna get my marker out. Quite thickened pleura here, but actually, when you look at this region, the pleural line is just not established in this region. And really, what has happened is the lung margins have dropped back. There are static air bronchograms with subpleural consolidation. So there is an element of atelectasis over here. And then as you go down again, you can see plural line established, subplural consolidations, a few static air bronchograms there. So, I mean, what you can see as you progress from R1 to R5 to R6. Now, does anybody, so would, Anna, would you like to talk about R6? It's worse. Yeah, it's worse. It's more extensive the the atelect disease. Maybe some areas seems atelect disease with no pleural line established. Yep. But no. Uh, it, yep, you're right. In, during during the briefing, the pleural line appears and Good. disappears on Very the right good. of the screen. Yep. So what you classically are seeing is tissue sign. You've got static air bronchograms, but there's you know here. You just, when the baby inspires, might be able to see a plural line. But in this region, I can't see a plural line at all. This is actually the true plural line that you can see. So in the middle, uh, 
and my gut feeling is what you've basically got is you've got expiratory atelectasis, especially this region here. Uh, now, clearly from our perspective, this is the right lung. So when you think of your mnemonic for babies who are kind of uh, going through dope, well, can you, can you, from your perspective, say that the tube's in the right place by looking at this, just the right side? The tube is in the right place. How do you know? We don't have the upper side uh, with the collectors. Ah, uh, okay, that's a fair point. That's a good. That's a that's a good argument there. Uh, anybody else want to kind of comment on why we think the tube is in the right place? Look, because on um, R one we don't have some area of atelectasis. If we are in selective or the tube is deep. We should have some atelectasis or collapse on R1, no? Okay, you're right. So, like, clinically what I've done is I've looked at where it is at the lips. But what I want to reiterate to you is you can see sliding in R1 and R2. So, if you can see sliding, and again, this is, you have to be very careful. The one thing in this baby that we'd already done is we paralyzed this baby. Now, if I've paralyzed a baby and he's not breathing and if he's extubated, and logically, you should say this baby would be desaturating and very sick and probably hypoxic. But what is important is that sliding is always a marker if the baby is not breathing, that you must be having air in and out. And that means the tube has got to be in the right place. If you are ever confused about it, I mean, you would clinically confirm. But once I look at a baby who's paralyzed, and I can clearly see this sliding here, it is a marker that the tube's in the right place. Now, it could still be obstructed or partially obstructed. We haven't excluded that. What we do have is lung atelectasis that's getting worse as we move behind. And it's quite bad at R5 and R6. So, I mean, from our perspective, one of the things that comes to mind is whether we might be able to recruit this lung and how we do it. But let's have a look at the left side. So what do we think about the left side? Manju, do you want to comment? Yes. Uh... So you can assume that R, the, the right, so what what we, we are doing is we've seen the L1, L2, L3, L4, and actually they're pretty similar to uh, the right side, but this is L5. Okay, yes, yeah. Uh, can see the, I think in some areas, I can see the plural, particularly moving from left to right uh, in a couple of spaces, but again, it's uh, thickened. More well seen on when I'm looking at the screen, it's more seen on the right side. Uh, uh, Are you uh, sure you can see plural? On the right side, on uh, when I'm seeing the screen, uh, there is it not the plural which is a bit uh, uh, echogenic on the top? That one, yeah, could be. I you just have rib coming out there. My, yes, my yeah, gut yeah. feeling is my my gut feeling is it's probably not okay, yeah. You just have intermittent margins in between the ribs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do the others think? I mean, feel free to comment. No, we don't see, I, I don't see any plural. So I just don't see a linear line there where I should. And yeah, it's a little bit tricky over there, but I mean, what else do we see? Static the bronchogram. Very good. So deep, static deep consolidation. Yep. Some in the in, in the in the but uh, deep consolidation and uh, this is most likely a trick to this. Okay. Uh, why are so? Can you can anybody see any lung pulse? I think right at the bottom it looks there yeah. is lung pulse. So there's lung pulse here. These yeah. are really deep consolidations that you see over here, mm. and you can see lung pulse in them and. What you've got is consolidation with atelectasis. I mean, basically, the left side of the lung is it's gone, and uh, this is posterior. The reason you're not seeing uh, a lung pulse here is because this is the back of the lung, which is quite far away from the heart. But actually, as you as as you come medially, you can see heart. So I mean, this is a large area of atelectasis, and then can you see this? Now, Manju, can you see the plural line here? Yes, yeah, no, those, so, yes, as the so, baby is breathing. Yep. So, uh, what, with the ventilator, it's coming in and out. Yeah. So, what I've done over here is basically 
this is a scan where I put the pressures up and I've gone up. I mean, we're conventionally ventilated. We're not ventilated uh, by oscillation. So I've put the pressures up by about two. I've given this baby a little bit of time, about half an hour, and I've come back. And what you can see is that there's still room for recruitment. So I haven't followed a classical recruitment maneuver as described in the literature, but you can see that actually by just putting pressure up and coming back, I've been able to establish more static air bronchograms in the middle here because we've got better air penetration. And actually some element of the plural line is now starting to generate. Now, clearly I can go up on the pressure further to recruit lung, but does anybody want to talk me through how they would be able to do a recruitment maneuver on conventional ventilation. Hello, can I ask a quick question before yeah. that? There's, you know, on the screen on the right side, what is that structure we are seeing uh, uh, just uh, much more to the right of the, to uh, the right, yeah, a bit more, it's just coming in and out of the image. It looks like a heart chamber, but it should not be a heart chamber because it should have been pulsating. Uh, my, my gut that feeling is that basically would be in the abdomen. So oh, okay. you have this is this is basically yeah. where the diaphragm should be coming in. Okay. And mm -hmm. my gut feeling is that's an organ in the abdomen. Now, whether that's the spleen or kidney, mm -hmm. it might be the kidney because I'm very, you know, I'm very low and posterior. So okay. rather than catching the spleen, I might be catching the kidney. But mm -hmm. I mean, what I've got is static air bronchograms, no dynamic mm -hmm. air bronchograms. Uh, I'm not very convinced I have fluid bronchograms there. Some people have asked. Uh, I, I think what you can see, however, is a plural line that is now established with the recruitment. But I'm just keen. How would you do a recruitment maneuver on conventional ventilation for this baby? Anybody want to have a go at that? So increasing the PEEP could be one of the options. Okay. So how quickly would you go up and how much by? Because here, I didn't go up on PEEP. I went up on PIP. On pressure, yeah. So how how would you do that, uh, Dr. Hasud? Um, one to two centimeter every 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, okay, fair point. I mean, you're cautious like me, so that's good. Uh, the, anybody else? What's described in the literature for conventional ventilation? So normally what people say is if you're doing it on conventional ventilation, you can increase the PEEP by one and you can do that every one to two minutes and you can go up by five in the literature, which I think is very brave. Uh, I'd say that, you know, this baby is already on a PEEP of six and I have gone up to uh, on pressures. And the reason I went up on peak pressure as opposed to wanting to go up on the peep was because I was a little bit worried about blood pressure and uh, knocking the venous return off with increasing peep in this baby because we were quite borderline. So the question from my perspective is, could I recruit the posterior aspects of the lung with just going up on peak inspiratory pressure? But the literature kind of describes going up on peep very quickly uh, to get what is the opening pressure. And the expectation would be that if you went up by the PEEP, you'd be able to recruit the lung right up to the margin. And this profile, which is classically described as a C profile, would start changing into an S profile, which is what I will show you. And that S profile basically presents with horizontal lines. And that basically is a sign that demonstrates recruitability. Now, if you cannot see that sign after, say, a recruitment maneuver where you've gone up by PEEP, in a short period of time, say by three to five, which I think is quite brave, then actually it usually indicates that that's an area of lung that might not be recruitable. Now, a very good example, and this is really, really important. So if you have a right main bron brain, uh, so if you have a right main stem bronchus intubation, often what you'll find is you collapse the right lung, but you collapse the left lung as well. Now, if your tube is low, and you have an appearance like this on the left side. So the left being collapsed because your tube is down the right main bronchus and you keep increasing pressures. What will eventually happen is you will over distend the right lung without actually having any recruitment in the left lung. And that is why it is so important that before you start any recruitment maneuvers in the lung, you're absolutely certain that your tube is in good position. If you can see it on ultrasound, that's really helpful. But if not, for babies over a kilo, the weight plus six formula works well in the majority of cases, I'd say 
usually above 750 grams. And then there are normal grams that we use for babies who are 750 grams and below. But you need to be very careful because if your tube is in the right main bronchus and you're trying to recruit the left lung, you're not going to do that, but you're going to over distend the right lung. And that can actually be detrimental to the baby. Now, this is just an example of atelectasis. And again, the, the important point about atelectasis is that in the actual zone of atelectasis, you will not get blood flow within it. You usually get blood flow in the areas of consolidation below. And I mean, that's clearly demonstrated here and that I can't see any vessels within this area of atelectasis. Maybe with the eye of faith, there's a little bit of blood flow below that. I'm not really convinced there is, to be honest. Uh, but Really, this is an area where the pleural line is not established and you've got subpleural atelectasis. Now, it's a very small area. Now, uh, does anybody want to comment uh, is on the scan? What are we looking at? So, can I go ahead? And yeah, please. Hello? Okay, so, um, uh, nope, I cannot see pleura sliding uh, or absence pleura. Yeah. Um, there is um, static uh, bronchograms. I don't yep. see any dynamic. Yeah. Um, yeah. BP yeah. profile mostly um, in the in the area, and then uh, and I cannot really appreciate. No, I can I, I can see a, a bad sign. I can say this is a line. Okay. So if I say this baby is about six hundred grams, mm -hmm. uh, this is the right side of the lung. You can see the diaphragm here with liver. Yes. What is the first thing that comes to mind if this baby is intubated, ventilated, and starting to desaturate? So the baby is saturating while he's ventilated. Yep. Okay. What is the um, first thing that you need to do? So this is near the diaphragm. Um, we'll check the tube, of course. I'll, I'll go to the door and make, make sure you know the tube is in the right position, air entry equal, uh, the, the usual steps of the door. Um, Very good. But, but but this is this is near the diaphragm, so it's actually in in uh, would be a right R R five. This is actually uh, uh, this is R one. R one O. Yeah, okay. and two together, and the reason it is is because it's a very small baby. So basically, one probe has captured everything. But what it's basically showing is uh, a you know significant atelectasis with a B profile. And mm -hmm. I would, I would certainly, as you've said, I would be having a look at where the tube position is. Mm -hmm. So what do we think about over here? Anna, would you like to come in? Okay. Um... Amy? I think I'm not sure where the diaphragm is. That's why I'm a bit confused. Very good. Very, very good. But we have a bad lung with uh, consolidation, bronco air bronchograms, static B lines underneath. And on the right of the screen, I'm not sure what I'm seeing. So that there, yeah, yes. very good. Is the diaphragm down or up? That's... So this is the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So what is this? What is this? Yes. Yeah. What could this be? Anybody? Tissue? Tissue? Uh, electricis? Very good. Very so that's the diaphragm. Can okay. you see my margin there? Yeah. And uh, can you see how there's no sliding here? Yeah. I can't see a plural line. So yeah. classically, the way Professor Liu would describe this is it's called occult atelectasis. It's a very mm -hmm. small area of atelectasis that you can see. What you have to be very careful about with it is, again, that often areas of occult atelectasis uh, will be picked up. And when you look at them on the x-ray, you will not see them. That's why they're called occult atelectasis. Over here, obviously, we have a, a significant subpleural consolidation uh, mm -hmm. with a very irregular pleural line with some blood vessels. 
I mean, I would definitely, when you look at this, you just worry that whether this might actually be a fractal sign with an area. So you can have, as we said, pneumonia can present with atelectasis as well. But these are classical situations where lungs might not be amenable to recruitment. And the risk here is if you're doing a recruitment maneuver, and this is a mnemonic kind of a consolidation, you might not be recruiting this lung and you might be subjecting the lung to a lot of damage if you go through a recruitment maneuver very quickly. Does anybody want to comment on this? Uh, can I make a go? Uh, yeah, 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 go for it. So, you know, it looks like uh, you know, on the left side, we can see some, it looks a uh, structure at the bottom. Again, can't clearly see the... Uh, so, so stick, to, stick to protocol. If you yeah. stick to protocol, you... So for everybody, the scans I'm showing you today are, they're not easy scans. And really, a, a lot of it is because you should be able to see the case in the baby. But the reason I'm giving you these scans is because when, when we have the exam, really some of them will be with clinical presentation, but you'll be given a static image like this to have a look at. So my advice would be stick to the protocols. Can you see a batwing sign? Yes, can see the batwing sign. The okay. plural appears to be thickened. And uh, in some areas, it is also irregular, um, particularly towards the left side. Yeah. And... Uh, we can see the uh, B lines. Uh, in terms of the plural sliding, uh, it's a bit hard to see the plural sliding. Yep. Um, there is subtle subpulmonic changes in the more towards the uh, to the extreme left, uh, and on the right side, bit hard to comment. Uh, hard to know where the diaphragm is. There is a echolucency. Uh, just uh, so that's the diaphragm. There's the diaphragm. Okay. Yeah. yeah diaphragm. This is uh, the liver. The spleen. Then. Oh, spleen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because of the okay. left side. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so sorry. what do we think about this region here? Could that be fluid? What do we think? Could it be fluid? It is echolucent, covered by uh, surrounding looks uh, echogenic. The not quite sure. Look. Okay, so you can see plura up till here, and then you yes. can see a very thin plural margin there. Mm -hmm. For me, the points against fluid are you have a subplural consolidation, mm -hmm. and again, the question that I'd be asking myself is, do I have a little bit of occult atelectasis there? I put Doppler over it again because it's it's not irregular enough to represent a fractal sign. Now, I think the reason I'm presenting this is one of the ways to kind of look at occult atelectasis is basically to see whether you can recruit this. And a recruitment maneuver may help differentiate. Now, if you do a recruitment by putting pressure up and this disappears or becomes smaller, then this could be an area of atelectasis. On the other hand, if it doesn't, if it stays exactly the same, then the question from your perspective is whether you've got an area of breakdown over there with the pleura being extremely thin. And again, it's clinical correlation. But I'm just giving you different flavors of atelectasis versus consolidation. And the most important aspect from our perspective that we're going to talk a little bit about today is lung recruitment and how to do it safely. Now, the most important aspect of lung recruitment is that it tends to be worse, sorry, atelectasis tends to be worse in the dependent areas of the lung. So really your area of interest is very important. And I would say that if you're kind of, you've done dope, you've excluded a pneumothorax, you show your tubes in good position, and you're then starting to look at lung to try and make a diagnosis of atelectasis pneumonia or RDS, really what you might find uh, is collapse consolidation but if you've just done the anterior and the lateral sides on the right and left side, and you've not done the posterior part, then you are really missing out. Now, I know that in an unstable baby, that can be difficult. My advice would be to go through the posterior axillary line. Now, what is important is that you are looking at the area of lung that has the poorest recruitment when you're trying to do a recruitment maneuver. 
and the th thing that is very different from adults as compared to neonates is the position of the baby is the most important factor when you're trying to do a recruitment maneuver. So a, a good example is uh, if, if I have a baby who's nurse supine, as we've seen, was the case with our baby at the start, and you've got significant atelectasis in the posterior areas as demonstrated in R5, R6, and L5, and L6, then where, how would I want to position my baby for the recruitment maneuver and how would I position my probe? Anybody? Wrong position? So would you leave the baby? So, sorry, yeah, you were saying, Anna? Yeah. I, I was saying that the probe may be in the worst part. Very good. So that's one way of doing it. So would you like to keep your baby supine? No, prone. Very good. Very, very good. So in an ideal world, if the baby is stable, in an ideal world, if the baby is stable and can tolerate handling, and we need to be cognizant of that, I would put the baby prone and then I would start my recruitment maneuver by keeping the probe perpendicular to the lung margin. And really what I'm then looking to do is basically Increase PEEP as is classically described, uh, unless blood pressure is a major problem, in which case I might decide that actually I want to go up slowly and I'm going to use PIP. But classically, what's described on conventional ventilation is increasing the PEEP by one to two. I mean, big term babies, you can go up by two every one to two minutes. Uh, I would advise a little bit of caution because one of the things that I really worry about is when you have focal atelectasis is the damage that you might be doing to normal lung. And, uh, you know, this concept of an open lung, five minutes go up by a peep of five to six and open this lung up might mean that pop, the lung basically bursts and you develop an pneumothorax. A better way of doing that depends on how unstable your baby is. And in big term babies, maybe going up by a peep of two and two again, maybe over a longer period of time, and keeping and doing serial interval kind of, uh, I would say, recruitment maneuvers with the probe might be a better option if the baby is more unstable. Uh, in extremely small babies, please be very, very, very careful because if they have decreased venous return to the heart, you will not get pulmonary blood flow. And the risk in that situation is the heart-lung unit will not cope. And I will show you a case next time where... Uh, I, I will demonstrate to you what is meant by the heart-lung unit not coping. Now, when you do lung recruitment maneuvers, what is the approach and how should you do it? So we've, we've got a baseline of lung aeration. Please make sure the ET tube is in right place and is effective. And really, the other thing is then making a precursor kind of clinical assessment to make sure that your cardiovascular status is completely stable. Now, if it is completely stable, uh, what what you would normally do is then go up on PEEP. And as you can see, this is a C profile. So very similar to the profile that's been described over here. So, you know, you've got an element of atelectasis. And what you're looking to see is whether the poodle line gradually gets established as you're going up in increments of pressure. Now here, these guys are going up massively. I mean, you're going up by pressure of, you know, 20 to 40. Uh, this is an animal model. Uh, I, I'm not sure that you can you can do that. I, I think you have to be very cautious in neonates. But once you've reached peak pressure and you've established your plural line, which you can see over here, with a B profile. So what you're going from is a C profile to what is called a B profile. And some of these profiles are classified as B1, B2. We'll talk about that. Is you then go back down until you get complete atelectasis. And the recommendation is that most people recommend going up by a pressure of two or three in the PEEP to then achieve a, a middle ground where you're going to have better lung recruitment. So that is how it's classically described. What you have to be very careful about is that the patient is able to tolerate that and the heart is able to tolerate that. And a very good marker of that is look at your heart rate and look at the blood pressure. And if you find in particular that your systolic and diastolic, not your mean blood pressure is starting to drop, that is usually an indication from your perspective that you have reduced venous return. In extremely small babies, uh, because especially if you're oscillated, this can be quite acute. 
I I don't hesitate sometimes to give them a little bit of volume, maybe ten per kilo, just to make sure that the right heart has enough filling prior to starting a recruitment maneuver. But most importantly, uh, I think what you have to do is make sure that your recruitment maneuver is done uh, very very cautiously in these babies. Uh, I'm gonna skip this and go straight to lung recruitment in neonates. And these are two articles that I'm going to share with you today. The, the, the first study of lung recruitment was described by uh, Dr. Piero and Chioma and group. And really what they basically defined from our perspective is an approach of doing lung consolidation, uh, lung recruitment maneuvers and consolidation collapse, where they talked about the use of patterns. And the pattern that they classically described is the C pattern or the consolidation pattern that we've, class we've identified. Once you detect that, the baby's position before you start is very, very crucial. So if you have dominant atelectasis with consolidation, and my experiences in supine babies, it tends to be worse in the posterior lateral regions, especially the posterior regions. If the baby's stable enough, I would try to put the baby prone. But if you find that it's left lung that's worse than right lung, then in that particular situation, what I might actually do is actually put the baby left up to allow better recruitment of the left side of the lung. And the reason for that is when you press, you place right down, you tend to have less well, better recruitment of the right side. So things can actually get worse. And that's why what, what you have to do is be very careful with how you're doing things and continuously monitoring the baby. But the worst area of atelectasis or consolidation should then be chosen. And you put your probe over that. And you start with increments as we've described. If you're oscillated, you're going to go up on the map by one every two minutes. Now, that's the protocol that they followed. Uh, and again, if blood pressure drops or the baby becomes more hypoxic, just be aware that actually you might be decreasing venous return and making things worse. And a, a very good example in that situation is if you're doing point of care ultrasound is I like to look at the epical view and basically look at the four chambers of the heart. And if my RA uh, is completely collapsed uh, and the LA is also underfilled, then really it tells me very quickly that we're not winning over here. What does pattern correction look like? So classically what Chioma and his colleagues have described as this pattern, a C pattern. And so just going back to the previous images, this is a C pattern. So what you've got is atelectasis with underlying consolidation uh, with no plural line established. And really what you're looking to see is that this area, which is completely uh, consolidated below the atelectasis gets recruited up so that you can then establish the plural line. So what you're eventually trying to achieve is a better plural line, a smaller area of atelectasis, and this is gradual. So they've gone up by four and they still haven't established a plural line. But what you can see is the C profile has become less dense. And eventually what you would like to do is then establish some element of the plural line. So, I mean, this is a different case. Uh, but what you can see over here is atelectasis where you have no change. So you've you've got no plural line. You have atelectasis with subplural consolidation and going up on the pressure by six has actually not established the plural line at all. Now, if you've done this over a period of 30 minutes, and this is a massive increase in you know, uh, opening pressure, this is lung that you're not being able to recruit. And you've got to be very careful here because what is happening is that the lung that is normal and that does not need recruitment is getting over distended and might pop. So what you're doing here is trying to look at pattern. Now, in this pattern correction, what has been described by Chioma and his colleagues is what is called an S pattern. And this S pattern basically are these vertical lines that you see over here. Can everybody see them? Can I have a yes from everybody, please, that they can see them? Yes. Yes, hello. Yes. 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 Okay. So what I'd say is that as, as you recruit lung, you get these they're described as sun rays. So this is described as the clouds. And, you know, for those of you who uh, uh, have seen the sun, especially coming up when you're flying, is you get these rays that are kind of radiating out. Now, if you see this S pattern, then this is defined as recruitable lung. 
On the other hand, if you see no such pattern after going up on pressure and it stays exactly the same, then really this is lung that is not recruitable. Now, not recruitable doesn't mean that this is not recruitable because you don't have enough pressure. It might be that this is the left side of the lung and your tube is down the right main bronchus. And really that's why it's so important from your perspective that if you're having this pattern, you have already checked and made sure that your tube is in the right position. It might also mean from your perspective that you have maybe a large area of mucus plugging and that actually, rather than actually doing a recruitment maneuver, this baby really needs to have physio and you really need from your perspective to go through a round of percussive physio with the baby left side down in order to help with expansion of the lung. And I mean, I've just recently been in that situation with the baby where actually increasing pressures made no difference, but actually once we'd done physiotherapy, we were able to actually get the ba baby to aerate the, the left side of the lung uh, very, very well. Now, the question from our perspective is, is this an evidence-based intervention? And uh, I would say that not only is this protocolized, but actually there has been one really nice randomized control study that's been done by Robert Cheoman and his group, which basically looks at the ability for uh, use of lung ultrasound recruitment maneuvers. And this was basically practiced in the Luster study. Uh, this basically, again, very small numbers, looked at 18 babies where they used a protocol of lung ultrasound guided lung recruitment versus oxygen guided lung recruitment. So as you know, that uh, open lung strategy and aeration basically can be done clinically as well, where you increase the PEEP in a baby and you gradually look at whether the FiO2 comes down. And if you look at that, then really uh, some people practice that. Uh, personally, I don't. But really using lung ultrasound means that you can monitor the inflation of the lung right under your nose, looking at whether an S pattern, a C pattern basically gets converted into an S pattern and whether that then results in better aeration of the lungs. And in this particular study, what they were able to see is that the group where they practiced lung ultrasound related recruitment were able to get much better improvement clinically, as well as in ST ratios, which is saturation versus FiO2 ratios. So they were also able to demonstrate good lung recruitment visibly. And they have developed this protocol. And this is the protocol that is actually, I would say, used by the majority of neonatologists who want to use lung ultrasound. I, I will share it with you today, but it's pretty much what we've described in that airway pressure is usually augmented by about a centimeter every one to two minutes in a stepwise pattern. Uh, they, in their article, they went up by a maximum of five. They never went up beyond that. And they, they kept a close eye on blood pressure. Again, what they were looking at is uh, recruitment of the lung as defined by an ST ratio, which is the saturations of the baby and the FiO2. And actually, they, they showed significant improvements in that. This is how they've used pattern uh, in time. So this is their protocol. And this is what they do. So they take a baseline view uh, of the area of the lung that is most atelectatic. They then position the baby. And this is really important. This is something that's very different to adults. So where the baby can tolerate it, the most dependent area of the lung, like if this is posterior or uh, the, the, the back of the baby, they would put the baby prone, then place the probe on the baby, and then increment the, the pressures. Now, if this was basically oscillation, they'd be going up by a map of one. But if it was conventional ventilation, they went up by peeps of one. And as you can see, what they're trying to achieve going up by a peep of maximum five is a conversion of the C pattern into an S pattern where you see. And if you get the S pattern, that says that the lung is recruitable. But then they want to kind of see if they can get to what is a B pattern where you can see plura with a, a predominantly B profile. And at this stage, the lung is described as being open, maximally open. But once that's been achieved, they will go back down again, pretty much to uh, a peep that was nearly where they started and actually see whether the S pattern appears. And then they usually take the peep up by between two and three above the original. So not to the maximum and then repeat the lung ultrasound. 
and basically look at trying to recruit lung. So this is the luster protocol. Uh, can I just emphasize, this is not as simple as it seems. And in extremely preterm babies where you have significant uh, problems with blood pressure and venous return, actually, I think heart-lung interaction is very, very important. And really what you've got to be careful about is reducing venous return. But the fact that you get an S pattern in a baby does not or may not necessarily correlate with clinical improvement. This is a very important take-home message. So let's say on the lung ultrasound, you were looking at recruitment and you started seeing a C getting to an S pattern, getting to a B pattern. But if you find that your baby's starting to desaturate, uh, the baby's blood pressure is starting to drop. Uh, this baby, say from our perspective, you know, you do uh, an echo in the four chamber view and you see that the RA is completely collapsed and the LA is underfilled, then really what you're actually doing is you're making things worse. And that's why I'd say that, especially in babies who are extremely preterm, who have bad RDS or chronic lung disease, who are ventilated or oscillated and you're doing this maneuver, the heart-lung reaction is very important. If you have a baby on CPAP, you can do this as well. And again, there are different ways of doing this, but we, we have babies with BPD and chronic lung disease who present like this. And really what you'd be doing is maybe being a little bit more aggressive in those situations. So if you're using a PEEP of five, uh, you might want to do a recruitment maneuver where you go up to six, seven, maybe eight, and then basically use the lung ultrasound again to see whether you get and move from a C to an S pattern, which indicates recruitment. But really, the ability to achieve a B pattern might be very difficult and might necessitate very high peeps. Now, personally, in my clinical practice, I have I rarely use peeps above eight to nine. I'm conservative. There are people, and I know my Canadian colleagues, you know, huge respect to them. They use peeps of up to 12. I've heard some people use peeps up to 15. Uh, I'm not brave enough to do that. But, you know, clearly from our perspective, Basics first. And the basics for me, always in situations like this is, have we lost seal? Is this a situation where the probes, uh, the, the mask is not appropriately applied? Correct all of those issues first. Make sure the machine's working before you start going in for recruitment maneuvers in these babies. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the, the risk of kind of venous return, but the other thing that I want to emphasize is air trapping and hypercarbia. So if you're kind of using this in the context of differential aeration of the lung, where the anterior areas of the lung have a dominant A profile, you can actually cause air trapping. And actually air trapping can actually make the CO2 worse. And I've seen it happen. There is one other study, which I will share with you today, which is the RELA study, which rather than looking at the described S pattern, actually talks about the use of lung ultrasound scores. And they have been able to demonstrate a very similar kind of uh, improvement using lung ultrasound, where rather than actually using the described pattern of C moving to S moving to B, uh, they've used lung ultrasound scores as described using the BRATS scoring method. Uh, again, what they've been able to demonstrate is that lung ultrasound scores become better using recruitment maneuvers. And actually that could then be used as a marker of clinical improvement if the baby is getting better. I think uh, what I'd say is that my personal view, and I disagree with some of my other colleagues who feel that this is very good, is please be cautious. Uh, my, my view is I don't think we have high quality studies that demonstrate that lung ultrasound based recruitment uh, is any better than oxygen based recruitment. And the numbers for me are just too small. And I would say that if you're planning to use it, please be very cautious about using very, very high jumps of pressure in very short periods of time in extremely small babies, especially early on. I mean, there's a very big risk you'll pop these babies. And I'm just wanting to also emphasize, we, we are fortunate and unfortunate here at the Corniche. Fortunate because the variety of clinical spectrum of babies that we get, I think, you will probably struggle with in any neonatal unit in the UK. We get a lot of anhydramnios. We get a lot of pre-prom. And a lot of these babies often have lung hypoplasia. Now, these are classically babies where really you need to make sure that you have optimum recruitment before you think of using nitric oxide. The challenge is 
how you define optimal recruitment in the setting of lung hypoplasia. And really that's where heart-lung interaction is key. And the last thing that I will cover with you before we sign off will be heart-lung interaction and how you use that to evaluate uh, lung recruitment in the context of babies who might have problems like this. I think what I would say to you is that my practice has been a little bit more cautious and if I'm doing it, I will increase pressure, but I will not do it as quickly as five in three minutes. I'd probably go out by one to two, give the baby 15, 20 minutes. Again, handling, positioning of the baby is crucial. I'd have a look at the baby at that particular point with baseline and then have a look at recruitment later on. And that's just the approach that I use. It's a cautious approach. I'm not saying it's the right approach. I'm not saying that you should not be following what's been described in the literature, but I think whatever you're doing, please be cautious. So you remember the picture I showed you? Uh, this is just recruitment before and after. And what you can see is this is an area of what I think is occult lung atelectasis. I've just gone up by the pressures by two. And really what you can demonstrate is recruitment over here. So this to me, it looks like an area of atelectasis. I can see a slightly better plural line, more established, uh, smaller area of atelectasis. So again, before and after images really help in this situation. In summary, uh, I'd say most importantly, before you're doing a lung recruitment maneuver, make sure your ET is in the right position, that what you're trying to do is recruit reversible atelectasis. So for a tube down the right main bronchus, with the left lung being completely atelectatic, if you start doing a recruitment maneuver, the left lung is not going to recruit. And then after that, I would say that if there's no improvement or if the baby gets worse as described, please stop. Uh, go back to the basics. Any questions before we see Doris's images? Okay, excellent. Doris, are you able to share your images? I'm going to stop my share. Oh, hi, look. Um, I couldn't find the presentation I wanted to Don't share. Worry. Don't worry. We can oh, do... Yeah, we can do it next time. That's not a problem. So can I just ask, just obviously, we will cover the diaphragm as well. Uh, probably after we've done heart-lung interaction, is there anything else that you guys want to cover, me to cover again? Maybe more images on the position of the ET tube, if you can. Have, yeah, We can do that. We can do that. Thank you. Because, um, like, uh, in terms of the, um, like, landmarks, some people are uh, going with, um, like, the arch of the aorta. Probably some other people are going with the pulmonary artery. Um, so, yeah. Yep. So, just my two pence worth of it. Arch of the aorta is easier to demonstrate. Yeah, correct. Uh, pulmonary artery, quite difficult. Uh I, my personal practice is to go with the arch of the aorta. I think the challenge that you get with it is if you don't get correct alignment, often the tube, especially extremely preterm babies where, you know, if you have a 500 gram baby, it can be very challenging. So, you know, again, what, what I will do is I will try and take some videos and pictures when I'm on service. So I think this and the lung recruitment, we want to kind of give you a flavor of how it's done. So best way to do that is to take a video of how we're doing it in real time, as well as the airway. Naz, you have Thank your you. hand up. Um, I just wanted to say, um, your explanations are amazing and the images are really, really good. But I'm, it probably is just me. I just feel I need to do it myself to see what happens with the lung recruitment, kind of play around with it myself and actually scan it. And as you said, you're very lucky to work at Cornish where you have that plethora of, you know, a pathology. We don't have that much of pathology and it's really, really difficult. So my query is, I mean, you know, I, it, we will get at some point and- Don't worry do about it. it. Don't it's worry that, about it. Um. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's not part of your competencies. What you'll okay. see when you look at your logbook is I'm not expecting you to do it. I think what 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 is important from our perspective is the diaphragm is also not part of our competencies. 
I my personal view is if you can uh, complete this course with recognition of what is common, I am I'm producing a guideline for the Cornish at the moment. It doesn't talk about any of these things. We just want to recognize five pathologies. And if you can recognize the five pathologies accurately to influence your management, that is much more important. I think the ethos of the course is to make sure that we've covered everything for you so that it's there and it's on the system so that you've got everything you can refer back. And like I said, you know, we are, the relationship of all the instructors on the course doesn't stop here. You know, if, if you later on have anything that you feel that you want to show or that you've learned and you want to say, hey, Alok, can we just chat over this? You know, we're supporting the guys at Southmead like that. They can't share their images online. So very happy to do that. And I'm going to also be very honest with you. I don't do the diaphragm. I, I don't have the expertise and skills to do it. I am going to do it. I'm learning. So I clearly recognize there's a, a kind of a, a learning kind of period. For me, the important thing is that we've covered everything and you can refer back to it at any point of time. But in terms of getting the skills, I'd say that most of you here are online for L3. And that's where we want it to be. I think your images are good. They're very high quality. Just remember, some of the images that I've captured, these are babies who are paralyzed. They're not fighting. You know, I, I've, I've been lucky. And I'm capturing them with a, with a need for teaching purpose. So, you know, the quality there is, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not at a disadvantage. Unfortunately, a lot of you will be looking at cases where babies are breathing, they're fighting. Trust me, your image quality, everybody, it's, it's very, very good. And if you remember when I started, I showed you the crap image. I showed you images where I was learning. So gradually what you'll find is it's less about the quality of the images. It's more about, can you make a clinical interpretation? And if you can make a clinical interpretation, taking into account that, I wouldn't worry at all about the quality of the images. Any other yes, questions? Yes, please. Yeah. Look, I think I asked this question before because I just cannot remember the answer. You know, when, when we do the like recruitment, uh, you showed us we do the echo to look at the functions of the heart and then we look at the area where we want to recruit. Do you look at the normal area to see if they are over distended? You don't. No. I mean, theoretically, you, you were not able to diagnose over distension on uh, lung ultrasound, theoretically. My only clinical experience that I'll share with you is that if you have a clear A profile with very minimal pleural sliding in every lung field uh, on an oscillator with a heart that's squished, just be very careful. Okay. So, yeah, but no, I you can't diagnose over distension. The entire concept is that you look at the most de-recruited atelectatic part of the, the lungs and just be careful. You know, what I'd say is that uh, if you kind of, you might have multiple areas of uh, atelectasis and like classically with meconium aspiration, just that's, you have to be very careful because you might have really bad air trapping there uh, in areas of the lung that say have uh, mucus plugging because of the meconium. You might actually make things worse with a recruitment maneuver. So, Again, experience says I wouldn't hesitate in my practice to kind of do an X-ray as well. So I'm using lung ultrasound, but I'm going to do an X-ray as well, and that's 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 key. That I'm using something else to kind of help me do things to help me make the diagnosis because that's the right thing for the baby. But no over distension is not something that we should look at. Normal lung is not something that I've seen described in the literature when you're doing a recruitment maneuver. Thank you. Just got one more question. Yep, lovely. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you. And uh, yep, uh, I shall see you on the 4th. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.